In this tutorial, you will explore how to launch your course, the course homepage, how to navigate your course, and review the Getting Started for Students folder at the start of your course. Let's get started. After logging in, you will see the course or courses you have been enrolled in in the form of course style cards. At the bottom of the course card, you will find an activities icon. Think of clicking on this icon as a form of you opening a textbook. So, when you click on this icon, you will actually be launching your course. Your course homepage gives you the information you need access to the most. Let's start the tour at the top of the main course section. The first thing you'll notice is the course title and the name of your teacher or teachers for your course. On the right hand side of the section, you'll see the current course grade and a grades icon if you wanted to view all your grade details. You'll also see your progress indicator of where you are at in regards to completing all the course activities. This course has two tabs, an activities tab and a to-do list. Let's start with the to-do list. If you watched the Getting Started with eDynamic Learning video, then you'll remember that your to-do list displays any assignments that need to be completed or that are past due. Your main activity tab will always be your starting point to accessing the different course activities and resources. You'll notice right below the activities tab is a section that tells you what the last activity was that you visited so you always know where you left off. The up next option is the next activity from the starting point of the course that you still need to visit. A search box is available to you if you want to do a quick search for anything within the course. For example, you could search for a particular lesson, activity, or resource like unit flashcards. Below the search bar is your course content. Think of the course content like an interactive textbook. Let me show you what I mean. Just like with a physical textbook, the course is broken up into units. Halfway through the course, you'll find a midterm exam, and then at the end of the course, you'll have a final exam. Look at the different folder titles. Is there one that's sticking out to you? If you answered the Getting Started for Students folder, then you would be correct. This is an important folder for you to view at the start of any EDL course. When you open the folder, you'll notice that it houses resources that are important for you to view prior to jumping into your first course unit. Let's take a really quick look at these folder resources so you know what you'll be looking at when you access them in your course. The first resource is on how to be successful in an EDL course, including how to successfully study, how to avoid plagiarism, how you would be graded, and an honor code. Next, you'll find a course syllabus that outlines what you will learn in each unit. The required materials page lists out all the different supplies, resources, and any specific items you will need access to that help you with completing your course activities. Make sure to review this list before starting your course so you can double check that you have everything that you need. You'll also find the full comprehensive list of key vocabulary and concepts of your course on the course vocabulary page. If the course you are enrolled in helps support you for possible career certification exams, then you will find information on careers and possible certification exams that you might be interested in exploring further. The companion course page rounds out your getting started folder with other course options that are either companions to your current course or might be of interest to you as another option. Now that you're aware of how the getting started folder supports you before you start your lessons, it's time to move back to the activities tab and take a look at how the rest of your course is organized. Every unit you work through will have the same organizational structure of lessons and activities. This means you will never have to guess on what is included in a unit or where to find the different unit resources. Once you know how to navigate one unit, you know how to navigate the rest. Let me show you what I mean. When you open a unit folder, you will always find your unit introduction and lessons at the top, followed by a unit podcast, a critical thinking questions assignment, all your unit activity assignments with their associated Dropbox, unit flashcards, your digital unit quiz, and your unit discussion board questions. These resources will always be found in that order. To open any item, simply click on it to launch in the activity player. So for example, let's launch a lesson, then talk about some of the features you might find in a lesson. 
Lessons can have a combination of text, pictures, interactive features, and sometimes even videos. In some lessons, you may find interactive test your knowledge questions. These aren't graded, but instead give you an opportunity to see what you know before you take your quiz. If you get a response wrong, just go back and review that lesson again. While you're inside the activity player, you can navigate to the previous or next activity items within the unit in two different ways. Either by using the backward and forward arrows located under the title at the top left hand corner of the screen, or you can use the previous and next activity arrows located on the bottom of the page. Let me show you by navigating ahead to a unit podcast. The unit podcast is an audio file of the unit lessons. The podcast can be listened to right here on the page, or you can download it as an MP3 file, or you can open it in a pop-up window that can be moved around to wherever you want it. The next activity item is your critical thinking questions. These questions will typically need to be answered on a Word or Google Doc, but your teacher will let you know how they would like you to complete your assignment. Once you're ready to turn in your assignment, you will use the Dropbox page. Think of the Dropbox like a turn it in folder or a pass it to the front of the room type of scenario that you might use while you're in your classroom. It's a way to get your completed assignment to your teacher for grading. I'll go more in depth about how to submit your assignment via the Dropbox in another video. So for now, let's continue on our tour and look at a couple of other assignment activities that will also use a Dropbox. This is an example of a unit activity. Each assignment will give you detailed instructions, including how to complete the activity. Each activity also has something special found at the bottom of the page after the assignment details, a rubric. Rubrics let you know how you will be scored. You can view what is expected of you in order to earn full credit on the assignment. So you're never left hanging on whether or not you've completed the assignment requirements. And again, like I mentioned, after each assignment activity that you have to turn in something for, you will have an associated Dropbox for that activity to submit your assignment in. You also have access to interactive unit flashcards that you can use at any time to help you review and study key terms and concepts found within the unit. Every unit also contains at least one discussion board question. You'll be able to post your response to the discussion board for the whole class to view and also be able to interact and respond to your classmates' responses as well. At any time you want to jump back to your main course activities landing page, simply click on the back arrow located to the left of the activity title in the upper left-hand corner. You'll notice that there are green check marks next to some of the activities. The green check marks indicate the item you viewed or open and have used the top navigation arrows to move through. In this tutorial, you explored how to open your course, the course homepage, how to navigate your course, and review the Getting Started for Students folder at the start of your course. Make sure to check out the Dropbox assignment submission video next to learn how to submit your assignments to your teacher.